Now moving on, a genuine guest in the studio now. In the 70s, he was a British champion. And that meant a lot of fights, a lot of waiting, and just dreams of a world title. However, he did lose on points over 10 rounds to an impressive Roberto Duran in 1982. He's had a couple of careers since on the outside of the ropes. He's still got a couple planned. It was a pleasure to welcome Jimmy Batten to the BBC London 94.9 studios earlier today. A solid member of the Terry Lawless machine at the Royal Oak. A proper champion in his day i asked jimmy well i started by asking him um once he was comfortable when and where and at what age did he start to box six and what was it west ham then? no i was my dad took me to the popular district boxing club with my brother my brother's a year older than me and we was told we was too young but they let us train it for a couple of weeks and then we didn't go back anymore uh i then asked me dad when i was nine no i was ten Nine or ten, whatever. Yeah. That uh, I want to go boxing. My brother didn't want to go then. So you went on your own. So I went on my own. So he took me to the boxing club. Popular again. Popular dish. That was in Roman Road in Bow. Then yeah. it changed slightly. So uh, when he couldn't take me, I went on my own. And at ten years of age, you could get on a bus then and travel somewhere. It was it was a yeah. forty minute oh, trip. Really? Yeah. But uh, so in them days, you could a young boy that could travel. Yeah, of course good. Not like today, unfortunately. Yeah, they've been dropped yeah. off by their yeah. mum and dad. Yeah. As a junior, uh, Jim, you have success in the schools and the junior ABAs? And yeah, I had f I'm three national schoolboy titles, two junior ABA titles, and one national association of boys club championships. I was unbeaten for five and a half years. So the full trio of the, the, the titles Everything that I were available? For. Everything that was there I won. Who was boxing, who was boxing in those championships with you? Because I'm always fascinated when I look at schoolboys from the 60s and you see all these different people fighting who were like in the sport now or went on to become pros who were trainers. Who, who was around in the same years as you, let's say in the schools? Can you remember any names? Yeah, Lee Jiggins, great fighter. Uh, Mickey Quinn, got a pub in the city now, Mickey. Uh, Mark Newman, all those reps and boys. Uh, West Ham, Joey Chapman. Trains at uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stevie Woodward. I'm stretching the fine names now. No, uh, but it's a Stevie Pegg, who was an heavyweight. Yeah, Peggy. Peggy. Uh, uh, he ended up at Repton, Peggy, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of fighters did. Uh, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible for thinking. I was sent for a psychology and memory test once, so I forgot to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll move on to your stand up a bit later on. <laughs> Jim, tell me about uh, you know when you first turned pro. Because you were a baby when you first turned pro. I, I mean, in boxing terms, weren't you? Oh, I that? turned pro at 18. It was a big kerfuffle about it at the time. I was too young. but uh, And that was with Terry Law, That was then? with Terry Law. But Terry didn't chuck me in with, oh, I did fight some good fighters. My yeah. first fight I had was a, as a world weight, which really and truly, I was a world weight my old career. Yeah. Well, I boxed like middle. Just fought like middle, but you yeah. were. You could I, was have done, a, oh, I could have done. Could have done This is today. Weighing in the day before. Yeah, Doddle yeah. for you, wouldn't it? We, we, but I fought a guy called George Salmon. Yeah, yeah. Who was rated about number six in no, the country. That was a tough guy. Yeah, yeah. six threes at the old ball. That was yeah. you know a decent fight. Decent start for a baby. Yeah, and I, I've had I had me touches along the way, like everyone does. Yeah. Uh, but people used to say. But not as many as people imagine. Some no. people imagine that all that Duff and Lawless stable fought 20 road sweepers. When I won the British title, the fight after the British title, I boxed a guy called Jimmy Savage. Yeah. Who was number five middleweight in the world. Yeah, yeah it's an interesting thing, Jim, because you jumped you jump right there to, the winning, yeah. to yeah. winning the British title against yeah. Albert Ullman from Alpington yeah. in 77 at the Royal Albert Hall. What's interesting is before your next defence, you have four non-title fights, and then you have two non-title fights. Now that that's what I think younger listeners yeah. and champions now wouldn't understand. What do you mean you had four other fights? That's kind of mad, that isn't it? I mean, you know, well, in modern terms, today's boxing is is changed considerably. When mm. you think of the amount of titles first, yeah, cool. there is, and the fight amount of fighters. And I'm not knocking for quality at all. I'm not saying everyone thinks their era was probably the best. The best, of course, the best they do. But uh, it was different. Yeah. The, you couldn't have title fights, you had to be nominated and you had to go through a system with the British Boxing Board of Control. It is slightly different today. Oh, yeah. But then you, you either had non title fights or you didn't We didn't have, fight. Didn't fight. Yeah, you know? So you would have had you'd have been having years out or like yeah. nine months out between title fights. And I boxed some good fighters in for, for in, in the middle as well. <laughs> Did you ever, yeah, yeah. 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 
Yeah. Uh, you know, you, talk, you, you mentioned that there about um, you, you, you know, it's different. It is different. I mean, they make more money now, and they make money easier now in in many ways. But it doesn't necessarily make them better fighters. Are you one of those guys? Like Alan Mint is a really bitter guy. Gary Mason, who I've got an interview with Gary mm. later on, that did a, a last year. He isn't a bitter guy. Where do you fall, Jim? Well, angry or bitter? I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm, 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 I'm bitter with myself. Yeah, to a degree. But it doesn't really bother me. I've had a great life. Mm. I didn't quite achieve which I set out to achieve and which I think I could have achieved. But if you'd have been at World to Wait or if things had gone well, different. There's loads of reasons. Yeah. Loads of, I could you know, I could write a book about the reasons, but that's another thing. Mm. But I've found a life for myself to do after. Yeah. You've Which got to have a more challenge. More important than yeah. the boxing yeah. in many ways. Uh, you've got to have a challenge to go for. So I had something yeah. to go for when I stopped. Yeah. Uh, I did, it wasn't put in front of me. It wasn't given to me. Go Someone said to me, do you, God, do you, we do that? I've done it myself. Yeah. And I pushed myself and I, I lost a lot in doing it. Because you're an ex-fighter longer than you're a fighter, Jim, weren't you? Let's get it right. People need to remember that. Yeah, it's strange to think about it now. Yeah. You know, I talked to people. I mean, I, my, one of my good friends, Tony Paul. Yeah. Uh, Kettering. Kettering. I, I won the Lonsdale belt when I beat Tony yeah. in the defence. We, we we phone regular uh, and say so in contact and we go out to dinner on occasions. What about some of the other guys that you box? I mean, well, we just watched a clip of YouTube of you against Larry Paul. Because yeah. you know, what, did he go on to become a champion or had he been the champion? Because so Larry had be, been the champion before. Dangerous and, fight for Wolverham. And when uh, I fought against Albert Wynn for the title, there was a bit of a scream up that he should have had the, the, the shot. The shot, which I think was probably true. Yeah. But with my connections with Terry Lewis, obviously, and just the and, way it works. Uh, <laughs> And I wouldn't, would not that kind of greed. It's lovely. <laughs> uh, I got a shot, and and when the defence against Larry Paul would be my first defence, I was still only just twenty-one. Yeah, I'm amazed at that. Still a baby. That was what about twenty fights in or something like that. Uh, well, yeah, like that, yeah, yeah. it would have been just about. But you yeah, might about be right. Three years in. Yeah, yeah and uh, I, not everyone was sure that I would beat him. You know. Never entered my mind, of course. That you would lose. But uh, no, uh, and especially at the weigh-in, there was a little to do at the weigh-in. I think I won the fight there at the yeah. weigh-in. But yeah. Larry was a good fighter. Yeah, yeah, he was a good fighter, and I just beat him up basically <laughs> without being tempted. No, so no, 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 no disrespect to himself. I went out and had a fight. Four, it was, I'm my, watching it there. So yeah. the first round was brutal. Yeah, and um, Jim. Uh, the, talk, talk about a bit about the Royal Oak in those days, you know, the, the, you know, the people who were around. Because there's a, there a packed gym, a busy gym, a lot's been said about it. Nothing's really been written about it. Because no, some people it, were talking to me about I, it recently. It was a great era. You had some great fighters there. Great sparring. Uh, 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 there was never a team. Yeah. But you kind of have a team. They're all individual boxers. Yeah. Uh, individual fighters. Even though you're in the same gym and managed by the yeah, same, yeah. controlled by the same people. Yeah. You weren't a team. No, you can't just be a team. Point, but we were friends. Yeah. We'd run together. Me to meet Charlie Magri, Jimmy Flint, and different fighters, Johnny Gardner. We'd all meet mainly over Greenwich. I, I introduced the Greenwich thing to them. Uh, we'd meet at Greenwich Foot Tunnel. Oh, okay. And uh, we'd go through the top of the tunnel. Oh, course, yeah, the tunnel. Yeah. Marvellous. And, and uh, either that or Vicky Park, it was one of the two. Yeah. And, uh, so they'd come down and meet you, and you'd, all, and you'd well, go under the Charlie tunnel. Well, sometimes Charlie would pick me up, or I'd pick Charlie up, whatever, or, or we'd meet, meet at Greenwich Foot Tunnel, this side yeah. of the tunnel. Uh, Oh, it, it, it was a good thing and it, we were friends yeah. uh, and uh, I, I've got to say this in, 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 in Charlie me and Charlie were really close always have been and we were trying I'd, I'd beat Larry Paul this year and the voting for the best young boxer of the year was coming out and I've been told which was very points of mention who told me that I'd won it and I thought I would have won it anyway that year because yeah. 21 yeah, 22 I, second I, I defense some good, I thought some good so, fighters yeah. I beat Larry Paul done and I got a tennis elbow after the Larry Paul fight. I got a tennis elbow in the fight, yeah. so I couldn't do any training. I was supposed to fight a big fight at the Albert Hall, and because I couldn't have this big fight, they changed the rules around a bit. And Charlie fought for the flyweight title after three fights. Yeah, against Dave. So Smith. the only name all these reporters know all around the country yeah. is Charlie Megri. Yeah, because it was a massive fight. That yeah, was a big sellout. And it was all, all done on votes. Yeah, yeah. So Charlie got the vote, and I well, reason his first I, fight for beating Dave Smith. I've read, yeah, I've read in the paper in a, in a book in a betting shop. Before I'm going to the gym, and I've read a paper that Charlie Mack is getting the award. Now that's my mate. Yeah, 26 or 27 yeah. fights, title yeah. fights. So it was, it, but no disrespect to Charlie. Charlie was a great fighter, yeah, obviously. Course. You know, and, and but we 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 were still still stay friends after all that, and uh, it, it became a bit of a joke in the end.